Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, my name is Don K. Preston. I'm the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. Hope you had an absolutely fantastic weekend. Uh, I tell you, here in southern Oklahoma, we couldn't have had a more beautiful weekend if we would have ordered it out of the Sears catalog. I mean, it, uh, and for the, those of you who are younger, you may not catch that, but that's okay. You get the idea. Uh, I mean, beautiful, beautiful weather. The wind wasn't screaming and howling and what have you. And so, uh, wow, it, it, it truly was a marvelous weekend. I uh, got to go to a swap, swap meet, automotive swap meet, Indicator, Texas, and uh, had a really, really great time just, you know, just relaxing a bit. Didn't do much of anything, but nonetheless, that's the way swap meets go. And and again, uh, and my wife got to go with me on, on uh, Friday afternoon and Saturday. So we had a very enjoyable little break, as it were. And we you need that every once in a while, right? So... Uh, Good to be back with you. I appreciate you being with me. We are continuing our study of Israel's feast days. That's video number 10, video number nine on specifically the issue of the Sabbath. Now, I introduced something last week that is really, in many, many ways, it's the foundational issue concerning the Sabbath. And that is this, the feast days and the Sabbaths. Now remember, every one of Israel's feast days either began or ended or was a feast day and it was a Sabbath in which no normal work was to be done whatsoever. And so understanding that every single one of the feast days was a type and a shadow is critical, not only for understanding the issue of the subject itself, for, but for understanding eschatology. Now, why do I say that? Because as a type, and as a shadow, it means that the, that the Sabbaths themselves did not point to themselves or the observance of themselves. They actually pointed forward. They pointed to something else other than themselves. This is found even in the word that is used throughout the book, throughout the Book of Leviticus, chapter 23. These are the feasts of the Lord your God, speaking of all of the feasts that he was about to enumerate. These are convocations. Well, that convocation is not a word that we hear an awful lot today. But convocation, convocation means a rehearsal. Do you kind of catch the power of that? What this means is from the very outset, from the very initiation of the feast days, God was saying to them, when you observe my feast days, when you observe my Sabbaths, you are not pointing to those feasts themselves. They are not the be all the end all, they are not the goal. They point toward the goal. Now, what that means is, as a type and a shadow, is that when that which the shadows foreshadowed, when that which the feast days typified, arrived in what we call the antitype, i.e. the fulfillment of the type, then the shadows, the types themselves, 
would cease. They would no longer be observed in that typological and in that foreshadowing form. We find this in Colossians chapter 2, 16 to 17, where Paul says, let no man judge you in respect of new moons, <clears throat> feast days, and, and Sabbaths, which are a shadow of the good things about to come. But the body, the reality, is Christ. And in Hebrews chapter 9, the writer, speaking of the entire temple cultus, which was focused on the seventh-day Sabbath, the monthly Sabbaths, the yearly Sabbaths, the Jubilee Sabbaths, etc., etc. Those things were imposed, legally binding, until the time of Reformation. Now, this included the sacrifices themselves. Not just the feast days, not just the Sabbaths, but the entire system was a type and a shadow of the better things to come and was only to be imposed, only to be observed until the time of Reformation. What's the time of Reformation? The time when the types and the shadows, those rehearsals, those convocations, the time when what they rehearsed came to a reality. We find this very graphically in this chapter in Hebrews, in which the writer describes for us the Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. On this day, the high priest killed the sacrifice, entered in, offered the life, we call it offering the blood, that's the terminology that's used, but in Jewish thought, it was more giving the life. Because, why? Well, because Leviticus chapter 17 says the life is in the blood. So when you offer the blood, you're offering the life. That's, that's not playing games with words. That is observing what, what Yahweh said. The life is what was being offered. The blood was a symbol of the life. Such a critical distinction. But nonetheless, the high priest offered the sacrifice, went into the most holy place there to offer the blood, i.e. the life, and to return and to bless the congregation. There was no blessing of the atonement until and unless the high priest came out of the most holy place there to declare salvation for the congregation. So the writer says, now once at the end of the ages, Christ has appeared apart from sin to make, or to, to put away sin, excuse me. What did he do then? Hebrews 9, verse 24, Christ has entered into the most holy place in the heavens there to prepare him. So we have the high priest offering the sacrifice. We have the high priest entering into the most holy place there to offer his life. And Hebrews 9, 28, and now to those who eagerly look for him, he shall appear a second time apart from sin for what? for salvation, to, to announce, to apply, as it were, that which was purchased by the offering of his life. Now watch what Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1 says. <clears throat> I mean, I know that you know this, but let, let me remind us. Chapter divisions are nowhere to be found in the ancient Greek text. All right? We understand that. Notice how chapter 10, as we have it divided, begins with the word for, Greek word gar. It connects, <clears throat> it connects what's just been said, what's just been said. Oh, high priest 
offer the sacrifice, entered into the most holy place, offer offer the life, came back out to offer the salvation that had been purchased. Even so, Christ has appeared at the end of the ages to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He went into the most holy place and now was just about to come out from the most holy place to bring salvation. For, here's the reason for all of this. For the law, having a shadow of the good things that are about to come. So here's the writer telling us that not just the feast days, now let's be sure about this, that is to say, not just Yom Kippur was a shadow. It's the law. The totality of the law. Having a shadow of the good things that are about to come. So it's a completely false distinction, if one attempted to make it, to say, well, yeah, the uh, the Day of Atonement now, that was typological, but none of the rest of them were. Well, Paul said in Colossians 2, <coughs> that the new moons, that's what we call Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah or the Feast of Trumpets. The feast days, well, let's see, all of the feast days, all seven of the feast days, or eight if you want to count Shemini Atzerat as a separate one, they were all They were all feast days and the Sabbaths. So all of the Sabbaths, and by the way, this needs to be observed. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 17, Paul says, new moons, feast days, and Sabbaths from the Greek, Greek word sabbaton. Same identical Greek word found in the Septuagint, of Leviticus chapter 23, when the Lord speaks of the Sabbaths of the Lord. Well, the Sabbaths of the Lord (coughs) were all of the feast days, including the seventh day Sabbath. So here is Paul (coughs) saying that not just Yom Kippur, but all of Israel's feast days were typological. They were foreshadowing. Let me reiterate and close on this. Tomorrow I'll talk about what this means. All of Israel's feast days were Sabbaths. All of Israel's Sabbaths, and remember, In Leviticus chapter 23, all of the feasts are the feasts of the Lord, and all of the Sabbaths are the Sabbaths of the Lord. There is no distinction between a Sabbath of the Lord and the Sabbaths of Israel. Totally false distinction. So once again, and again in finality, (coughs) All of Israel's feast days were Sabbaths. All of the Sabbaths were a type and a shadow, a rehearsal of the good things to come. But the types and the shadows and the rehearsals were only to be imposed until what they foreshadowed came to an end. Folks, I asked somebody this question some years ago. <clears throat> Would you have a sh- prefer to have a shadow of your wife to hug? Or would you rather have, quote, the body, unquote? That's real easy, isn't it? So we need to think about that in regard to the importance. Because all of the Sabbaths were shadows. They were types. 
they were rehearsals. Christ is the body, the reality, <clears throat> the antitype. To put that finally in one more form, he is what was foreshadowed by the Sabbaths. He, therefore, is our Sabbath. All right? Hey, do not forget, rest this month, boy, the month getting away, <clears throat> my two-book special, <clears throat> Resurrection Feast Fulfilled, a study of the relationship between Israel's last feast day, Sukkot, and the resurrection, and the end of the law, the passing of the law of Moses, the passing of Torah. If you purchase these books separately and paid shipping, okay, you'd be spending a whole lot more money. <laughs> All right. For the rest of this month, February 2024, U.S. orders only, total delivered price, $36. That's going to save you over $12. So go to my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, click the banner, order the two books. You'll be absolutely thrilled. Now you may be challenged, all right? Fair warning, you may be challenged, but that's okay. It's never bad to be challenged by the word of God. All right. Thanks for joining me. Order the books. I'll see you on the flip side.